back. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, y'all? <laughs> it's your girl Nage, accompanied by my girls Erin. Hey. And Wanze. Hey girl. How you hey, looking really over there looking the, like uh, you? Ha, ha. That, that was great. <laughs> it's giving you know Jim Jones. <laughs> <laughs> not Jim Jones. I not her northern brother. Tears. Over there looking like a beautiful black pink Barbie. I know you're so cute. And then the hair fold back. It's giving all yeah. of it. It's giving gorge. It's giving classy. This it's Barbie giving, is like making nice money. Yes, yeah, big facts. Man, episode nine, here we are on today. I'm really loving, like, the aesthetics that we have going on. I don't know. It, it's making me really happy right now. Like, like really, really happy. Well, today I actually yeah. was going to wear black and white, but then I saw y'all had pink on, but I was wanting to be cozy. Yeah. And I was about to ask y'all, would y'all trip if I put on a hoodie? And then I saw y'all in pink, and I'm like, oh, the only thing that I have that I brought that has pink in it is this hoodie. So, yeah, the aesthetics are still aesthetic but they I are. can't say that it was one accord completely. Y'all was on one accord. I just hopped on the bandwagon <laughs> because I wanted to be cozy, and I'm like, yes, I get to wear a hoodie. So, yeah, yeah, it's a little chilly in here today. Yeah, yeah, it is a little chilly. I love color psychology, though, so I think that's really what mm. it is. I love the way that the pink is making me feel right now. What does yeah. pink mean? I feel like we looked it up for your for your Dude, colors. For, the, uh, for branding, right? Yeah. But that was all cash. I shouldn't have. I don't know. I just love how vibrant it is. I feel like it feels alive. Yeah. It's a statement without you having to say anything. Yeah. Just, yeah. Um, Hold on, I'm about to read it. Pink, uh, not a giving me the definition of pink, beloved. Oh, yeah, the definition? That's crazy. <laughs> I'll try to look... Uh, a color immediately between red and white. Boy, get by. Uh, I was looking for the like the branding pink. Here we go. I have a positive, whole... romantic, feminine, playful, yeah. innocent. Oh, uh, that's me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> accepted, <laughs> friendly. Uh huh. There's a whole website. I think it's called colorpsychology.org or something like that. That's mm -hmm. actually accredited. Um, it's she said to, it's actually credit. You yeah, said no, what I just you know, read was people false. Will, will make a website saying whatever they feel like oh, saying sure. and, and all their own thoughts. So, oh, you for know, sure. It's, it's actual yeah. facts on there. Um, hey, stop for who, yeah. though? Do we know it's facts? I'll just play. Yeah. I'll just play. I'll just play. I'll just play. <laughs> I'm like, they, they, they made it up too. <laughs> I'm crying. But um, <laughs> I'm like, that's, that's the whole <laughs> world. Actually. You, you know what I'm saying? Everything we know is just something we're taught. Yeah, that's true. Shout out to It's Not Alive. That's a line from one of their songs. Y'all know rock music tonight alive. Speaking about things that were taught in reactions, I saw this really interesting thread from Spiritual World. Are you on threads? Yes. Oh, I'm not. Oh. I'm old. Yeah. I can't tell I'm if it's that I'm threads. old or that I'm just going through stuff in life and don't feel like I want to give it attention, but I haven't gotten on threads Personally, yet. I feel as though I'm both in this moment because <laughs> uh. I'm not on threads. I just, I saw a screenshot of yeah, it. Yeah, uh. Like on, you like, you know, people have been yeah, posting on their Instagram. threads on their yeah. Instagram and that, stuff so like does, that. I, it's, I feel like threads is like Twitter where people on Instagram who aren't on threads catch it late. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When my friends be sending me tweets on Instagram, I'm like, beloved, I'm on Twitter. You missed this. <laughs> like, I'm on Twitter. <laughs> I'm not on Twitter either. There. Oh dang! I, just, I don't have out. the energy, bro. Like, I feel I, I that. Be tired, I love it though. Like, I, I guess because I like to think, so I'm just like it's just. I like words because Instagram, you gotta work too hard for it. See, yeah. and and like this podcast is like the only time in my life that I've like expressed myself via words. Oh, um. <laughs> 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 not, not both of us. Not both of us understanding. <laughs> that, that's what that was in that moment. We were both like, "Oh, that makes sense." Because y'all know me. Because it's true. It's very know true. Because like, you don't really pop don't out like out, that. Yeah. I don't speak out. I don't share my opinion. You online. have big thoughts, but you don't talk about it unless people know you. Yes, yeah. exactly. I'm very like interpersonal when it comes to like my thoughts and my concerns and my opinions and everything yeah. like that. So I've never been a Twitter person. Right. Uh, that's also why my vlog never worked out <laughs> like, Sheesh. I, I love words but I'm not vlogging or yeah. well blogging vlog you mm -hmm. mean vlog like videos mm -hmm. oh I thought you meant blog because mm -hmm. I'm like that's a lot of words no, like videos yeah because okay, yeah. I, I could never like just get in front of the camera and just talk like mm. to myself like it just it never worked out I wanted I to be to a YouTube that, girl but I just so started bad, vlogging but, Oh, I yeah. don't want to be a YouTube girly, but I got to get these words out. But I feel you. Yeah. Okay, my bad. No, you're good, you're good. Yeah, so I, I saw this um, interesting uh, thread from Spiritual World. Shout out to them on uh, Instagram and Twitter. Um, they post some, some pretty decent stuff. They're cool to follow. But basically, they asked a question of what is the hardest for you to say? Is it, I apologize, I need help, I love you, or I was wrong? And when I read that, I was like... Dang, just thinking about like go, my thought process. Can you processes. go back over one more time? Yeah, sorry. yeah, I'm gonna go. Yeah, let me. Um, I'm okay, gonna explain I'm this. Sorry, I'm sorry. No, you good, you good. So, 
when I read it, I was like, dang, like, I had to go through my own thought processes and, like, the way that I process things and the way that, like, I experience things because I was like, what is the hardest for me to say? I didn't even know myself until I, like, had to take a moment and actually think about it. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, uh, what's the hardest for you to say? Is it I apologize, I need help, I love you, or I was wrong? And for me, I'm going to say I need help is the hardest thing for me to say because – I think it has a lot to, like, I, I did a whole life analysis because I was like, why is it so hard for me to accept help? Even down to, like, the current relationship I'm in. Well, not current because it's going to be the only one, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but even down to my relationship, it was so hard to accept help from him. Like, mm. I've always been a superiorly independent person, even as a child. Like, mm. at the age of five, I would be outside by myself or walking around the town I lived in by myself. Sheesh. When I got into middle school, I would take the the public bus and to the mall by myself, which is like an hour wow. ride. You know what I'm saying? Like all those kind of things. And then so like growing up as an growing up as an adult, it was naturally just like I got to fend for myself. I got to do it. I got to get it for myself. Blah blah blah. And so accepting help or admitting that I need help is super hard for me. Mm. Um, I'm doing a much better job at it now, and I want to shout out my man because. He has allowed me to sit in my femininity and not have to be uh, such a hard body all the time. And I never knew what it felt like to be in this space until I allowed someone to, uh, to be vulnerable, for me to be vulnerable with um, into that space and into my mindset, into these moments for me. Um, I can apologize. I can love people. Loving people is one of my strong suits. Um, I love people and I love people well, very intentionally. Um, and I can always admit when I'm wrong. I, I believe in accountability. I believe in, um, you know, just standing up for yourself and, you know, just being the bigger person when you need to be and everything like that. So I need help is 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 definitely, that's, that's a hard one for me. Mm. What about y'all? Can you read them again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I apologize. I need help. I love you or I was wrong. I was wrong and I apologize. I feel like I'm similar, but I think maybe people admitting that they're wrong doesn't always mean that there is an apology. Right. Um, what do you think, Wande? Yeah, I was actually going to make a joke, but then I was like, started thinking about it and I was like, oh, that's funny because it's actually the actual answer. So I was going <laughs> to make a joke because y'all used to comment and be like, oh, so you're not going to say I love me back? Oh, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> <yo>. <laughs> <laughs> It's the self awareness for me. Wait, because, no, that's, because that's me and you will be full on <laughs> in tears. Hugging each other like, oh my god, I, I just love, love you, you so much. And, and then we'll be like, like Wanda, we love you. She'll be like, it's lit. <laughs> yeah, I just that, said, yeah. I, it's lit. It's oh the self awareness god. for me. Yeah. Thank you. And then yeah. it's interesting because then I started thinking about it. I was like, oh, maybe that's the answer. And I, I think I observed like I grew up around gangsters and mm. then politicians, and mm. so I have like two various spectrums of like with the gangsters. It's like f boys who just like oh. You know, F these women, oh, this is a sport. And, like, when you're a little kid and those are your brothers, yeah. it's just like, oh, yeah, kid, yeah, this is a sport. This is funny. Uh, <laughs> and, so, and so I didn't realize I learned a lot of toxic things as a child. I'm like, oh, like, this is not okay. Uh, and then, Especially with music, too, because I love rap music. Obviously, I'm a rapper. So you, you got rap music mixed with actual people who treat women like objects. Mm -hmm. Not a good situation. Yeah. And then with the politician side, then um, it's people who are, like, very like there's a proper moment for everything and like yeah everything is like calculated in a play almost yeah and so then like showing emotion not on it's kind of like yeah, looked down yeah upon, just like yeah. not on cue of like this is not the moment for that right or it's like oh wow you're showing emotion right now like and so i especially when we were younger yeah, yeah i realized like certain things like that trigger me of like you're showing emotion right now. Like, this is not, mm. <laughs> this is wow. not, this is not in the so script. So interesting. Yeah, and so it's it's interesting. I'm realizing I'm, like, relearning a lot of things of, like, oh, like, why is that? I'm, like, it's, like, really, like, a lot of things, like, calculated on script are really ingrained into me. So even now I'm, like, unlearning. Like, even um our music video, mm -hmm. Wild and Free, mm -hmm. like, I had to allow myself to unlearn some things of, like, my shirt because my shirt was rising a couple mm. centimeters. And then, like, I was having, like, a mental breakdown internally of, like, ah. <sighs> It's not good because right. if it rises two centimeters, I'm gonna get all these comments, and if I get all these comments, it's gonna like you know take away. Because she's showing part of her stomach. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. sexualized. But it's cool because you and Doe actually taught me a lesson 
of like, especially like Doe too, how she's like, this person, she genuinely loves God. Like, it's not even a question. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was cool seeing her freedom of like, yeah, I'm wearing this shirt. Like, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like, comfortable. Yeah, just being like a human. And so I feel like it was teaching me to like unlearn certain things. I'm trying to figure out where we even started with this conversation. But, <laughs> but, but you're talking about, you were talking about saying you love you Yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. And- so just, yeah, I would say the I love you part was like, I guess, the hardest because certain things I'm like, well... I don't want to, also because I like to say things I mean. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't want to say something if I'm not 100% positive, especially like with the whole rapper thing that y'all observe sometimes of people are like, oh, y'all feel like you're Wanda's best friend, but you don't Mm. know her. Yeah. And so I also don't want a false sense of like, oh, we're besties, but it's like, we're not besties. Right, right, Um, right. This is, I think, a combination of all those things mixed with the factor of like perfectionism and all that stuff. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I should say this right now, if I should just wait. And so I think that. And then when you don't do it often, then it's not as comfortable. Yeah. So then you don't just naturally do it when other people are doing it because right. you're like, your brain is doing all these things. Yeah. 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 I understand that because I would say that, yeah, when I was younger, I, <clears throat> I've i always been a deep, deep lover. So, I, But I just, I was always scared to say it because I didn't think I was going to get it back mm-hmm. and not them say it back. I was worried that. If I told them that I love them and they didn't love me the same, it would really hurt. Then I just realized I'm built like that. I love people who don't really love me. Mm-hmm. I love people who love attributes of me or what I can do for them and not really me. And I just had to become okay with that. I would even say, like, apologizing. I used to never apologize because I felt like it was uh, it in minutes of, like, f- like being flawed. Mm-hmm. It's like, uh, you are flawed. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And oh, I thought it was, like, I thought it was this thing where it was, like, uh, if I admit to this, then, like, I'm the lesser person in this mm-hmm. in engagement. But, like, choosing that path of humility actually makes you not even the better person. It just makes it more – you you now become more accessible. Now it's easier for that person to feel safe and communicate with you. Now, terrible people will use that and try to use you. But I, I would say um, that's a hard question for me. I'm not perfect, but I'm quick to apologize. Uh-huh. Um, I'm quick to own my stuff. Um, I I, lo- I say I love you. I was telling a friend this weekend that I don't know that well and haven't known for very long. Um, they said they loved me one night, and I was like, I've been waiting to tell you for like a whole week. Mm. <laughs> and then they were like, are you just saying this right now because we're like feeling good? And I was like, no, I'm going to say it to you tomorrow for the rest of our life <laughs> oh. now. Because like, I, I was like, I felt like I loved you like, maybe a week after I met you, but I just didn't want to tell you. And now it's like the fact that it's open. So like, I'm quick to say I, I'm quick because I'm quick to love people. So I'm quick to say, I love you. Um, I need help used to be my biggest. That used to be a struggle for me, but bless God for therapy. I, I was telling the same friend, I'm the needy friend. I'm I'm like, help. I'm the, can y'all, oh, you can't, I, can y'all, like, <laughs> literally, okay, so the, the Maverick thing, you know I'm blocked on Uber. Uber yeah, yeah, yeah. Because somebody, fraud on my account, whatever, so they sent us the Uber um, vouchers to get to the airport. And I couldn't, I was trying to find people to call an Uber for me with the voucher because I can't do it. So I literally started texting people in the morning, and everybody was asleep, and I just went down a line, and then somebody responded there, like, do you need it? I was like, no, you were just third in my line, but I asked eight other people, and somebody <laughs> did it. Like, I'm, help, yeah. <laughs> damsel in distress, <laughs> what? I am quick. My mom the other day was like, you are so quick to ask somebody for something. Like, why don't you do it yourself? I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Like, we're we're built to need people. And I used to be, like, the reason that I used to be so independent is because my parents are like that. They're like, don't ask for help. So I had to, I grew up that, and then it was just, life was so hard for me. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm like, no, I'm quick to ask for help. I, please help me. I think the hardest one for me, because I, I think I'm good at apologizing. I think the hardest one for me is I was wrong, but not necessarily when I know I'm wrong. I think it's hard for me to to say I was wrong if I'm not convinced that I was wrong. Mm. Like if somebody is hurt by something that I do or said, I'm hell bent on being like, well, it was the truth or, well, that's just how you see it. But I have to be, I'm learning. I'm walking through that right now. It's like I have to accept my role in it, even if that wasn't my intention. 
you know, like intention and perception are two different things. And I don't mean in an abusive way because some people try to gaslight you into being like, well, this is how I took it. So you need to feel bad. But I do feel like when people are hurt by your actions, you have to be willing to accept that and say, hey, that wasn't my intention, but I'm willing to make that right. I was wrong in this or I don't feel like I was wrong, but I'm apologizing to you because I know you were hurt and that wasn't my intent. Not even like, well, because you felt that way, I'm apologizing because I think that's a microaggression. But really being like, I hurt you and I'm sorry about that. So I'm learning that right now, um, accepting that my actions, even though unintentional, can affect somebody Mm -hmm. um, and then navigating that. Because, again, I think that people can get really manipulative with that and be like, well, this is how I took it and you shouldn't have and you were wrong and you don't have any integrity. And it's like, well, no, we 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 disagree (laughs) on this. I'm okay with the disagreement, but I can accept that the way that I thought about this or processed this or walked through this hurts you, and I'm willing to own my part in that. So I think there's a lot of nuance there. I want to caution y'all, but I think accepting things and being like, hey, I have some part in this, um, especially as believers, because the enemy uses um, mm-hmm. uses uh, offense to really separate the body of Christ. Yeah. Like that's a, pff, not they offended me, I'm writing them off. And um, I think that, if I can do any part in mending offense, then it's my responsibility. Mm-hmm. And so that's where I'm learning. I think therapy has helped me say things faster, acknowledge I need help, apologize. I, I think I've always, I, I like when people apologize to me and keep it moving. So I just became that person. I'm like, my bad, sorry, da, 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 da. But I think saying like, yeah, I was wrong. Mm-hmm. Even when like, like accepting when new information is presented, like I'm like, I don't think I was wrong. But then somebody that I trust being like, I see where they're coming from, though, and then I'm like, dang, maybe I got to step in mm-hmm. and, like, help mend this, you know, so yeah. that that's my answer for that. I feel like um, what I want to say about these is, although these are forms of communication in themselves, um, saying I apologize, saying I need help, saying I love you, this, that, and the third, I feel as though communicating through the ones that are hard for you to say are going to be the only way that you can realize the self-awareness and why it's hard for you to say it. Yeah. There's something connected to that. There's something connected Mm -hmm. to that because if like, if you let it lie dormant and you never communicate it, you never explore it or anything like that, it's going to continue to be a problem for you. It's going to continue to be hard for you. So it's like, and and I'm bringing this back to, to your example, Wande, like the only way that you had, become comfortable with saying I love you was by saying I love you. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And though, you know, it may have been an internal conversation between yourself or whomever that you, you know, speak to about, you know, those things in your life that you, that you shared with us about um, the way you were raised and all that kind of stuff. It's like, it's never going to be easy until you put it into practice, until yep. you communicate it, until you, like, you know, take these these things that you're learning about yourself and actually expressing it. Do you know what I mean? Um, Especially on the apology one. I used yeah. to not apologize because my parents never apologized to me. Right. So I would just be like. That's good. Yeah. But then it was like. The moment I started apologizing, it's so natural for me to be like, oh, my bad. Okay, mm-hmm. sorry. If, when you accept responsibility, it makes it easier. So then people are just like, yeah, yeah she, cool. And I'm the opposite. I feel like I apologize because my mom never apologized to me. Mm. I feel like I take pride in taking accountability because mm. I was never, it was never modeled for me. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm like that now, but yeah. it was a learning process yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not talking about the sorry, sorry, sorry that women do. We, no. ladies, we have to break that. Yes. We are not inconvenient. I'm so glad you mentioned that. We are not inconvenient. We are not in the way. A quick mistake, a misstep. You don't have to apologize for everything. What I'm saying is accepting responsibility. Hey, this wasn't done properly. My bad. Show me how to do it. Or I thought I did it right. Show, can you show me how to do that? Oh, well, weren't you supposed to? You're right. I, I told y'all I would do this, and I didn't. My bad. You know what I'm saying? That That's what I'm talking about, accepting responsibility and being accountable for your actions. I'm not talking about the sorry, sorry, oh, 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 oh. Ladies, don't tiptoe. I, yeah. We have culturally accepted the sorry, 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 because we're so almost like it's like a shame tactic. We like f- hold so much shame that we're always kind of ducking our head and apologizing. No, sis, walk proud and don't feel like 
this is something else too I will say with the apologizing and accepting accountability I think you have to be careful about the people that you're around because if you're consistently apologizing and they're not people we're making Mm, all of us are making mistakes all day yeah. If the people around you are only accepting, that's something I realized. I'm quick to apologize. The people in my circle are not. Who, the people who were in my circle were not. I had to move to a new circle because I recognized that I was the only one taking the responsibility. Yeah. And when people don't see that they're also responsible, then they start to blame you for everything. Yeah. Then you're sitting here apologizing in a relationship and it becomes abusive yeah. because they're like, well, it must be you because you always apologize. Like, no. I care, so I'm looking to mend this, but you're so full of yourself, you can't see that you're also a part of this. So I would be careful. If you're the only one accepting responsibility in your circles, and if you're consistently trying to make it right and mend the bridge, then you should migrate to new circles because that means that the people around you aren't willing to be on the same level of accountability that you are. Yeah, I feel like all of these these different, uh, I apologize, I need help, I love you, I was wrong, are different things to look for in any relationship that you're in yes. in your life. Uh, being being as though, I don't feel as though you can have a success, successful, healthy adult relationship if you continuously uh, negate from any one of yeah, these. Yeah, all four of those should be present in you know every relationship. All four of yeah. them should be present, whether it's a friendship or a romantic relationship. Unless it's business. You don't have to tell business people you love them. No facts. But I, <laughs> but I do think that I apologize, I was wrong, I need help, even in business. Yeah. Those 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 should be intact and, and enacted in all of your relationships. For I sure. Agree. Um, I've recently been uh, reaching out to uh, a friend that I met through Wande. Um, that you also met through one day, um, not necessarily on a, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm about to, I'm going to slay. I'm going to get there. It's going to coincide. Watch. But <laughs> watch. <laughs> I've been reaching out to her because, um, I am personally emotionally attracted to her story mm. and we have a lot of similarities as women and the way that just the nature of our lives has gone and everything like that. And so um, it just, it draw me, it drew me to her, but then getting to know her as a person um, and as an actual person and everything like that, I'm like, dang, this girl is dope. And uh, starting a sunglass company and everything like that, I was like, okay, I'm realizing that I need help. I'm realizing that I need people that care about what I'm doing just as much as I care about what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I actually want to highlight her um, on this episode today um, I'm gonna do a holy girl highlight and I want to highlight you Adia for oh my being gosh. an amazing woman um, for having an amazing story to tell for being there when I told you I need help and and you were more than 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 willing to accept you know some of the glasses that I wanted to send you and Honestly, I was going to keep this between me and you, but even sold a, a love offering to me for mm. that. And I was just like, I just want your help kind of getting my word out. You know what I mean? And she went above and beyond and has been going above and beyond and um, just being an amazing person. Uh, and she also reciprocates the same things. She's amazing. Um, she's amazing. And and we all know her personally now at this point. Yeah. So um, I know that they can all attest to what I'm saying as well for that. Yo, I'm going to hop with this holy yeah, girl yeah. highlight because I wanted to start it. I wanted to highlight her now because I want to take some time to just to discuss her because we all know her. We all have a relationship with her. Um, this is not your invitation to go blow up Adia's inbox. Y'all can follow her and show her some love, (laughs) but she can't be all y'all's friends. But let me, Adia, I met her at the Super Bowl gospel experience thing. Was she hosting or something? She was like helping out or she would, no, she was the social media person, right? For the Super Bowl gospel, were you, you weren't there, were you there? I wasn't there, but I yeah. remember. Oh, I remember so Wande, yeah. Wande yeah. performed on that, and so she was there. I think she was doing social media for the Super Bowl or something, and she was, I just remember her being so sweet, like off rip, and was like, she was interviewing everybody, but then she was like, sis, I got to get your information. And I'm like, most of the time, people want to get the artist information, which is cool, and then occasionally people want to get mine. It's cool. I'm not looking for that, but she was, like, so intentional, just yeah. kept coming to talk to me, whatever, and I was like, okay, cool. Like, it was cool. I wasn't thinking nothing of it, good or bad, 
But then we just kept running into each other at every, because she works with everybody. You know, she's singing and writing with Pastor Mike Jr. She sings yeah. behind Thames, who I love. She's making her own music. She's touring. You know, she's killing it. So she just took home, like, I think, like, eight Stellar Awards. It was yeah. just crazy. Oh, so Adia, of go off, so sis. Of but and she, she was hosting for Spotify. She's yeah. just everywhere now, but. She's somebody who I've seen. I don't know her. I haven't long, known her for that long or that well. But she's somebody who I've seen, like, literally that scripture, your gifts will make room for you. Yes. And she's so kind. She is the person that she seems to be. Yes. So, like, every time I see her, even if it's just quick, I'm like, that's my sis. Yeah. That, like, there go, there go my sis. That's yeah. every time I see her, I'm like, look at my sis shining because she's such a loving and caring, just a beautiful, and she supports. Yeah. Boy, she will show up for somebody. She just, she, she yeah. has no problem, sh like, shining a light on somebody else and yeah. not even talking about herself. She's just, Adia, I love you. Yeah. You are a light and such an encourager, and I'm so I'm happy to highlight you. Shout out to you, Nash, for thinking of Adia. You are the one, and I love you. You are so incredible. It's crazy, too, because when you were talking, I just remember she was also part of my awakening process. Oh, wow. So I remember, too, whenever I was, like, in my low moments, she actually pulled up from out of state to the studio. Wow. And literally her just being herself literally, like, helped encourage me. Because I remember, yeah, just seeing her, like, be lively and, like, mm -hmm. jumping around, mm -hmm. be bubbly or whatever. And I was like, oh, wow. It was funny because me and Clark were laughing because I was like, oh, this is what it's, what it's like interacting with me, like, on a creative level. Mm -hmm. And so it's funny because she was just being herself, but her being herself was like, oh, wow, I haven't seen a light in yeah. a long yeah. time yeah. of, like, while I'm in, like, in the studio type stuff. And so, like, even that was, like, so beautiful. Like, she didn't even realize. Yeah. Like, dang, man, you, like, help keep me yeah. alive type She's stuff. so like, consistent like that. Very consistent. Yeah. And yeah. so I think also just on top of that, she's, like, such a humble person. Yes. And crazy yeah. talented. Because I'm like, Extremely. these vocal arrangements, Extremely. That, that is not easy to do. The yeah. song she's writing on, she just, she's so good at so many things. It's like I met her as doing social media for the Super Bowl, which is crazy. And then Super Bowl gospel. And then it's like now she's hosting for Spotify, but she's also singing behind Tim's she's writing with Pastor Mike Todd or Mike Mike Jr. but also singing behind him help you know, she's so good at so many things yeah and yeah. it's just like hey what's up y'all what y'all into oh she's I so love great. this yeah, yeah. So idea. I'm excited for her like and it's funny too I actually met her like 10 years ago oh wow but she don't know this that's the funny part so I met her whenever I was in college still uh, at South by Southwest. Mm. And so one thing about her, too, that actually inspires me is she's so pro super professional. Mm -hmm. So back then, she had, like, her artist banner. Because me and Nasia are in our artist banner uh, research phase right now. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but she had an artist banner, and it was so mm. professional and so beautiful. Yeah. And I was like, man, like, who is this? And so me as, like, a kid, like, 18, 19... I'm like, oh, wow, this is, like, a real artist. Like, this wow. is crazy. <laughs> and so it's funny, though, because she don't even know that I saw her back then. Wow. And so it's crazy even then. Like, she's been wow. consistently professional, like, all this time. And yeah. I can't That's wait for the yeah. Lord to honor Absolutely. her. She's one of the, the few and far in between that um, I've seen, whether from afar or close, exemplify um, the importance of all of these uh, communication mm. uh, sentences that we've expressed today. Um, I've seen her ask for help. I've seen her apologize. I've seen her um, love on people. I've seen her, uh, what was the other one? And she said, like, she's told me she loved me. And I'm like, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, she's still loving. Yes. yes. I've yes. seen her admit when she was wrong before. You know what I'm saying? Whether it, I was, you know, directly there and or, you know, witnessing it or if it was, like, from afar, kind of seeing stuff on social media, whatever the case may be. But, um Adia, you are a rare gem, and we are so grateful to know you. So this one goes out to Adia Sings as our Holy Girl highlight on today. Yeah, dear. Um, And I want to encourage you guys that are listening or watching this episode, if you struggle with communicating any one of these uh, sentences, ask yourself, why do I have a hard time saying this? Mm hmm um, get to the root of it. Yeah. Because we want to see you guys healthy and happy and whole. Like, that's what we want for ourselves. Why wouldn't we want it for you too? Yes. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, and by watching this podcast, you're in the vicinity of greatness. So, mm, come on. Um, absolutely. 
you're in a vicinity of greatness. So if you want if you want greatness, you gotta you gotta do the work and you gotta, yes. you know, start realizing some real things about yourself. And it may be hard at first because for me it was extremely hard. I was so stubborn, never wanted to accept help, never wanted to ask. But God will have a, a crazy way of humbling you sometimes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, I just want to encourage you all to sit with yourself, ask yourself these questions, um, see see how they affect you, see how you respond mentally. Um, we need us. Yeah. If you sitting here like, well, I don't even really talk to nobody. I don't mess with nobody no more, so I don't have anybody to tell that That's I also love a problem. or that I'm wrong. It's like we need us. And if you've been hurt so much that you don't want to do that, okay, cool. There's the root of it. Now let's work on healing that so you're attracting the right people yeah. to your life and not just the ones who are going to continue to hurt you. That's like, really good. Like, you, you can't control anything but your response. So I'm not going to say that you're responsible for the people who are in your life, but if people keep coming back into your life like that, that means there's something broken inside of you that needs to be fixed, and I just want to invite you to fix it. Yeah. Um, if you are a creator, um, artist, creative whatever the case may be, and these questions kind of uh, triggered you or, you know, maybe hit you in a certain spot in your heart that you never explored before and you want to go in depth about it, you want to kind of figure that out, I encourage you to uh, hit up BYOD and see if they have um, any available therapy slots uh, going. Um, share their website with your friends and family so they can buy t-shirts so that BYOD can continue sending creatives and artists to therapy. Yeah. Um, company, these are some... Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I was just going to break it down a little bit. My company's called Build Your Own Dreams. We have a therapy fund to send creatives to therapy. So... Um, the shirts fund the therapy, the shirts that say therapy on them. You buy one of those. It helps us send creatives to therapy. But if you want to go to therapy, as long as we're still selling shirts and there's funds available, mm -hmm. we'll pay for you to go. So, yeah, if this if these questions trigger you or if you're like, ah, I want to sort this out with somebody, I think we all need to try therapy once. I'm not for saying sure. it's for everybody, for sure. but it's for a lot of us. Yeah. And I think everybody should try it once, and we want to make that accessible. Um, and when I say try it once, I don't mean go to one session. I'm saying <laughs> I'm saying try it out and be vulnerable and see if a you can full cycle. Let if yourself you, yeah be it, involved in yeah, it. Yeah, so yes. you can so you can find that type of healing that you need. Absolutely. So the website is uh, buildyourowndreams.com. Is that what it is? No, it's just BYOD.com. That's crazy. Thank you, producer Via. <laughs> just BYOD.com is the 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 website. And if you want to buy the shirts to support the therapy fund, it's yeah. shop BYOD dot com and that's build your own dreams i feel like you can't build your own dreams if you don't protect your mental health so that's yep. what we're here for to love on you and help you heal your mind heart and soul absolutely um we want to hear from you uh answer the question with us what were some of uh what are some of these things that are hard for you to say and why are they hard for you to say them if you want to share if it's a little too uh you know personal for you to share with not pressuring you, but like we always say, we love hearing from you guys. We love communicating with you guys. We love the community that we're building. We love the winner circles that you guys are building and establishing on your own. So shout out to you guys. But um, we definitely want to hear from you in the comments and in our DMs. You know what I'm saying? So not mine, though. No, no, no. The winner circles. DM. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't um, DM me. I love y'all. I love y'all. But I don't I don't even think I check my requests. And it's not even yeah. on no Hollywood stuff. I it's don't want not, DMs because people much. are weird. It's too well, much. Maybe for you because you're famous and fine. But for me, <laughs> y'all are weird. People people send me the weirdest DMs, especially men. And I'm just like, love y'all. DM the Winter Circle page. Don't yeah. DM me. For me, it's like Instagram is is my creative outlet. I'm not, I'm not, I can't, I can't do all of the personal dms but i love going onto our instagram and communicating with you guys and speaking with you guys about and producer me will be holding it down in the dms on, on the winner's circle page she do she's so. loving and beautiful producer yeah. me are gonna give you a beautiful message back absolutely so yeah make sure you guys like comment subscribe share with your friends um and uh follow us on the gram our winner circle instagram and everything like that ask these questions to yourself how do they make you feel let us know we want to hear from you what a circle How does he we out I'm